Before we start building Yelp, we just need to understand the two basic components that make it so powerful. Why do entire groups of people, when they're faced with finding a restaurant, why do they pull out their phones all in unison and go to Yelp? It's because of these two fields right here, find blank near blank. And you'll notice that Yelp is automatically pulling in my location, so it already knows where I am. And all I need to do is click this field or type in something, and just like that, I will have recommendations. And so this is really the functionality that we need to start with and then build off of because it's at the heart of what makes Yelp Yelp. You have a, it's really all of a, it's all about speed to delivery. You have a request, it gives you that request as fast as possible, and it really gets out of your way. And that's the best part about Yelp's user interface. For example, if I just need to know restaurants near San Francisco, it's telling me, hey, go to Ike's if I want to. And I have the directions right here, I have a map right here, but then if I have some more time on my hands, I can get more granular. Let's say I wanna see a moderately priced option that's open now. Looks like Ike's is still up there, and yes, Ike's is delicious. <laughs> so, uh, and how do I know that? Because we have a review system, and the reviews are real people. And so, we're going to want to start out by replicating this system in a very, very uh, high-level manner, and then we can start talking about what makes Yelp so great, getting into how to add in mobile functionality, how to add in social functionality, and all of the other stuff that then uh, makes Yelp Yelp. Cool, so to get started, we're going to need to sign up for a Bubble account. And if you haven't used Bubble before, go to bubble.is. Right now we're in the new app screen because we've already created an account, but if you have not uh, ever used Bubble before, you can check out bubble.is, and I recommend going to their documentation page because you can see all about how Bubble is such a powerful tool to build an application without code. Bubble allows you to drag and drop your way to a really clean front end interface, which is really the most important thing when creating an application, especially like Yelp, where the interface is key. Many apps have tried to copy Yelp, but they just can't get better than the, the current iteration, which is just find this near this. So we're going to dive into Bubble, and by doing so, once you sign up for an account and you go to the main Bubble page, you will see the new app button. So we're going to want to just create a new app to get into the editor screen. So we will type in Yelp, code free. And for public or private, uh, just make it private for now. And when the new application assistant comes open, we're just going to want to say start with a blank page here because we're going to explain all of these different elements. Okay, and close the assistant, and here we go. So now we're in the bubble page editor. And what you can see here is that we have a blank canvas over here, which is replicating what's going to be our web page. And then on the left side, we have a panel of elements. So we have the ability to click and drag all of these different options that make up a web page, text fields, button fields, link fields, icons. We also have the ability to drag things like containers and inputs, which we will all get to as we build this application out. So how does Bubble work and what makes it so great? So how Bubble works is it is a layer that sits on top of a huge base of code, but it is one layer above it. And so what that means is you can drag and drop your way to creating something that actually exists with code, but it's actually preventing you from seeing the code base and uh, having to edit the code and potentially have to learn the code. And that's what really sets it apart with a lot of other code free tools like it. Because some code free tools will get, you know, maybe 50% of the way there or 75% of the way there. Maybe they'll allow you to create an interface or they'll allow you some database activities. But then at some point, they'll say, oh, and this is, if you need to do X, here's where you will insert some JavaScript. And, you know, hey, the whole point of this is we're doing this without code here. And so uh, that's why I really love Bubble's mission. They're taking this from a complete non-technical standpoint, and that allows us to build 100% without code. Okay, so let's just dive right in so we can 
think about what makes Yelp so great. So we already kind of talked about this, but let's go ahead and make it. We're going to take a text field over here. And now that we have the little crosshairs, we're going to click and drag. And we can make that just you know a pretty reasonable sized field. And we will say find with a colon. And what pops up after you create a field is the bubble inspector window. And there are a ton of different options. Bubble is always adding them all the time. So um, I'd say don't worry about all these options for now. We're going to kind of cut out and find the 20% of bubble that gives us 80% of the results we want. And we'll come back to some of this stuff later. But don't get overwhelmed by reading through all these things because yes, it kind of can look like something like Photoshop, which is a, you know, not, not the easiest tool to learn. Okay, so we have one text field that says find. And then what do we need uh, besides that? We need an input field because that's where we type. So we will click on input and we'll drag it right here. Find blank. And for this input field, we're just going to write in the placeholder. The placeholder is going to be, uh, you know, restaurant, um, cheap dinner, etc. Don't worry about anything else at this point. We just want to get these four elements here. Okay, so find blank. And then we're going to draw another text element here. We're going to say near, just as we did there. Okay, we can click out of it. We can also drag this around to shrink the element a bit. And now we need a, the ability to get someone's location. And that is done in Bubble via a search box. And we're kind of diving a bit over our heads since this is the first lesson, but for now we're just going to drag the search box. And all we're going to say is this is the search box and the choices style is going to be geographic places. Our placeholder is going to be city, comma, address, zip. Okay. Now we click out of there. We have find blank near blank. And the last thing we need to do is add a button. So click on visual elements, drag a button over here, and we will type search for the name. Okay, so we now have these fields. Doesn't look very great, but it is going to get the job done because now when we hit the preview button, what Bubble's going to do is it's going to take all of the elements that we've dragged on the page. It's actually going to compile them into a live web page. So just like that, we are actually live with a website. And that's what is really cool um, with Bubble is that you can create a live website and then tweak it endlessly, really. Uh, you can, you know, we can see, okay, hey, these fields are kind of far apart. This is Bubble's responsive engine kicking in. So like maybe we want to just drag these closer together. And now if we hit preview, it will update. And that's what's really cool. Um, and we're going to get into a lot of the other functionality in a bit. But for now, we can just see, oh, this is great. We have a find and, you know, let's say tacos. San Francisco has some great tacos. And you'll see here, oh, when I type in anything, it will start to autofill with geographic places. So we already have some really basic function, functionality ready to go. But when we click on search, nothing happens. And that's because we're going to have to tell the app what to do and what to display when this information gets searched. And, and so really to, to describe how that's going to work, we can go back to the application now. And we can think about, OK, well, hey, when, what, what really happens when Yelp is doing this? You know, it's, it's basically taking a search query, and it's trying to look for keywords near that address. So if I type in sandwiches, it's going to it's going to do a lot of different things. It's going to search for the name of the place. And if that doesn't return anything, it's going to search for the reviews. And so we're going to really need to build a search engine here that's going to take the values we enter, the city we enter, or the address or zip code, and then output results that are actually useful for the user. And so let's take a look at exactly how we can do that and how we can think about that. And 
The, the way that we're going to do that is by looking at this data tab here. So if you've never built a web application before, here's what separates a web application from a static application. Um, and we can look up something called the model view controller framework to show us exactly what is different. So if I go to, let's say, a Squarespace website right here, you'll see that this is a static website generator. And this is what people often get confused with because you know, they see, okay, hey, you know, Squarespace is, you know, this is a tool to build a website. It's a website builder, but what makes it different than Bubble? Well, here's what is really the difference. On Squarespace, it's all about display. So we can do things like we can put photos up there, we can put text up there. But when it comes to building a search engine, that's not something you can do inside of Squarespace. That is something that requires a complete different amount of features that um, is something that's called a database-driven application. So we can see here, if we go to model view controller, what a database-driven application is. And it's called Model View Controller, um, which is kind of developer speak for what you can see on a browser, which is view. Let's just view this whole image. What you can see as a user. So, hey, view is everything that's inside of an internet browser. Model is what is behind the scenes as a database. So you can think of it as a spreadsheet. You can think of it as a living working document that is storing things like location data, like images, reviews, everything that we need to make our Yelp application actually useful. And then controller, you can think of as the workflows, the things that need to kind of act as the glue between the view and the model to make the whole thing work. So for example, a, a great example of a controller is the search button. When I hit search, we need to go to the database. We need to pull all of those relevant pieces of information. We need to pull them back, and then we need to display them for the user. And that's what Bubble is going to do because think about this, view is design, Workflows is controller, and database is model. When we go back to Bubble, we can see design, view, workflows, controller, and model, which is database. And so that's really how we're going to go about designing this application. Thinking about the model view controller model, which is how to program a dynamic web application, but doing it inside of Bubble using the tools given, using these drag and drop elements to connect them to a database. And in the next lesson, we're actually gonna just kind of dive right into what makes a database a database and start to populate some search results to make our application useful.